Now that we've covered ways in which you can use watch lists and scanners and TWS for trading and investing in fixed income securities, we'll now show you how you can use multiple tools in one dedicated place, including filtering bond criteria, creating charts, and entering orders. The bond scanner layout provides all of these tools in one location. To access it, click on File, Open Layout Library, choose Scanner from the list, and then Bond Scanner. You can read more details about the layout or simply add it to your workspace. A new window will then open with the Advanced Market Scanner at the left, Charting Tools at the right, as well as the Order Entry Panel, where you can make your buy and sell decisions. Let's walk through how these panels work together. You'll notice that many of these panels are color linked, for example, using these green chains. If you click on one of the corporate bonds listed in the Advanced Market Scanner, the chart with the same color linkage will populate with the performance of that bond. Seasoned bond traders will be aware that many bonds trade irregularly, which is why bar or candle charts over a longer period might not be very effective. To change the chart settings, you can use the Chart Parameters icon to edit the display. You may want to consider setting the view to line from the chart time period drop down menu for whatever period you wish to see. You should also see the available settings from the What to Show menu. Here you can select from various yield settings. I'll choose Bid Ask Yield and click Apply and OK at the bottom of the menu. The Order Entry panel has also populated with the bond we selected in the Advanced Market Scanner, again because my panels are chain linked. So let's now discuss the items on display when the bond is loaded in the Order Entry panel. You'll see in the Ticker Input field the description of the bond including bond type, coupon, maturity date, and IBC ID. If you want to locate another recently used ticker, click on another entry using the drop-down arrow. Below, you can see Buy Sell buttons. You must select one of these before an order can be submitted. I'll click the Buy button. This makes the background change from black to blue. You can also see that if I click on the Cell button, the background changes from black to red. You should note that you can also select to buy or sell a bond directly from the Advanced Market Scanner. Simply right-click on a bond and you'll see options to buy or sell, alongside other functions, including quote details, create a new chart, or create a specific alert. Back in the Order Entry panel, the default quote display shows the best bid price to the left and the best ask price to the right. The price display also shows the yield associated with the bid and ask prices. If I hover the mouse over the bid price and yield display, a pop-up description will display populated with information about the National Best Bid and Offer, or NBBO, and bid ask definitions. At the top of the box, you'll see a yield calculation using the current bid price as well as the dollar amount of the current bid. Hovering your mouse above the Ask Display quote will show you a similar image, except this time the yield is derived using the current asking price and dollar size of the best offered amount. Immediately below the quote display is a price slider. Here you can slide the mouse, and the quote display will show a single price point should you wish to choose a price relative to the bid or the ask, either above or below. If I hover the cursor above the word mid on the price slider, the display will automatically calculate and display that price instead. In the upper right corner of the order entry panel, you'll see summary data displaying the last traded price of the bond and its current yield based on the midpoint of the live quote. With the order panel set to buy, let's look at the quantity field. Typically, bonds can be bought and sold in minimum increments of $1,000. So when you load any bond, you should see the quantity field display $1,000. However, some bonds are issued with statutory minimums greater than $1,000. If that's the case, the quantity field will reflect the higher minimum. And if you click that input field, you will not be able to choose a smaller amount than the hard-coded value. You can see this with the 8% Chevron bond due April 2027. Here, the minimum quantity is $2,000. There may be other occasions when you may not be able to trade your chosen amount due to market minimums. It may help to display the Level 2 Market Depth window from the New Window button listed under General Tools. 
For the duration of this illustration, we'll use the push pin to keep this on top of our screens. In this level two market depth window, you'll see that to the left are bids at each price level along with the size column, which specifies how much the bid is good for. To the right are best offers, which again lists the volume available for sale. On either side, you can see the value for the minimum trade size. This should explain why if you're trying to buy $1,000 worth of a specific bond with a market order, your order might not fill because the only seller at that time and price is offering a minimum bond amount greater than what you want to buy. You can buy or sell using TWS using the minimums we just discussed. However, should you wish to sell short a bond due to market practice and regulations, the minimum order size is $100,000 and the minimum increment is $25,000. While most orders for bonds tend to be done as market orders, you're also free to set limit prices. Choose the amount you wish to trade from the quantity field. Use the order type input field to select limit or market. If you're using a limit order, use either the price slider above or the price input field to select your price, or you may type in this field too. Then select your time and force, whether a day order, good till canceled, as well as select whether you want to check the fill outside regular trading hours or RTH box. Once you're satisfied, you're now ready to transmit your order. You may create an order preview ticket by also clicking the submit button to the right. From here, you can verify the details of the trade as well as the estimated commission charged by interactive brokers. The commission may display as a range because it could execute on one of several electronic exchange venues. You can also see the estimated impact on your available margin should the trade execute. When you've verified and confirmed the order details, use the transmit button to enter the trade. Live trades resting on an exchange are displayed in the activity panel below the orders tab. Under the quantity column on this tab, you can see the current value executed as a proportion of the entire trade. The fill price will calculate and display should the order fill. The gray action button can be clicked if you wish to request cancellation of your order. If you later decide to make changes to the price or other details of your order, you can do so from this panel. In this example, we'll click on the price field and change the limit price. The action button has turned from gray to yellow. When you're ready with your changes, click the update button to reinstate the remaining portion of your order with updated details. One last note. Since configuration in the advanced market scanner also affects the global bond scanner, any changes made to the advanced market scanner in the bond scanner layout environment will also automatically apply to these standalone scanners. For example, if I add a column in the advanced market scanner and the bond scanner layout, you'll see the same change take place in the standalone versions. For example, if I add a column sector, you'll see that same column appear in the other scanners when you access them. You should now be able to access the bond scanner layout, change chart settings, enter orders, and have an understanding of market and statutory minimums that you may encounter across different bond issues. You can also learn more about different fixed income products through other courses on Traders Academy, including introductory lessons about U.S. Treasuries, corporate, and municipal bonds. I'm Stephen Levine with Interactive Brokers.